Welcome to Too Good to Be True, an investigative podcast about exposing the scams, schemes, and financial cults trying to separate you from your money. Hello, and welcome back to Too Good to Be True. I am your co-host, Ryan Hulan, a journalist and drag artist in New York City. And I am Julia Lorenz Olson. I create and co-write Two Cents with PBS, and I'm an accredited financial counselor. So guess what we're here to talk about today? What, what, what? I'm so ready. Supplements, vitamins, and essential oils. Oh my gosh. We're going to find out just how essential any of these oils really are. Or honestly, how essential any of this stuff is. We should probably note that we're going to be leaning particularly hard on the interviews we did for this and primary sources, because let's be clear right now, we are not medical doctors. This oh, is gosh, not no. medical advice. This is us investigating a topic and then talking about it. Yeah, so, right. We're just kind of looking at the landscape of what the research looks like from like a 10,000 foot view. Yes. The, uh, the point of this episode is that you should be suspicious of any influencer or media <laughs> yes. trying to tell you something. Speaking of, before we get into all the scams and the snake oil and the overpromising in this space... Let's first talk a little bit about what vitamins and minerals actually are and how our bodies really need them. So, for these terms we need to find, we turn to NIH.gov. Quote, vitamins and minerals are essential substances that our bodies need to develop and function normally. The known vitamins include A, the B vitamins, C, D, E, and K. There's also biotin and folate folic acid. A number of minerals are essential for health. Calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, iron, zinc, iodine, sulfur, cobalt, copper, fluoride, manganese, and selenium. Multivitamins, multiminerals, are the most frequently used dietary supplements, with close to half of American adults taking them. Multivitamins cannot take the place of eating a variety of foods that are important to a healthy diet. Foods provide more than vitamins and minerals. Many foods have fiber and other substances that can provide healthy benefits. However, some people who don't get enough vitamins and minerals from food alone or have certain medical conditions might benefit from taking one or more of these nutrients found in single nutrient supplements or in multivitamins. However, evidence to support their use for overall health or disease prevention in the general population remains limited. In addition to vitamins, dietary supplements can contain minerals, herbs, or other botanicals, amino acids, enzymes, and many other ingredients. Dietary supplements come in a variety of forms, including tablets, capsules, gummies, and powders, as well as drinks and energy bars. Popular supplements include vitamin D and B12. Minerals like calcium and iron, herbs such as echinacea and garlic, glucosamine, probiotics, and fish oils, unquote. So that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of varieties of things that they can stick in a pill. But there's a lot of people with a lot of health concerns. So it's not surprising that lots of claims have been made about lots of substances and they're all still in the mix. A lot of these people truly are religious about these substances. You know, if taking a B vitamin makes you believe you have more energy, even though you don't have a deficiency, you're going to take that as confirmation over and above anything that you might read no. or someone might tell you. And it's the same thing with aromatherapy. If lavender makes you feel calm, that's nice. But it doesn't mean that it's a, like clinically studied, approved effect for everyone. Yes. So in the spirit of financial confessions. <laughs> oh, no. I, oh, no. Okay. So this happened to me, what you just described. So I, a while back, I started taking fish oil. After a friend who's like a facialist, she was like, hey, if you're having trouble with blackheads, like if you take this oil, it can kind of help the, I don't know, the sebum, the oils in your face become like less cloggy. Sounds kind of right. And I was like, sure, okay, right? And so I start taking them. And for some reason over that time, I, I mean, I deal with anxiety a lot, but in that time, my anxiety was like, out of control. And I start taking these supplements. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm like, I feel really emotionally regulated. That's so weird. What's going on? And I I changed nothing about what I was doing. And I just happened to look on this fish oil thing. And one of the like little check boxes of what it does is like improves mood. So I was like, oh, here we go. My answer. 
to why I, and I still take them. <laughs> I do Dang. because like that line of thinking where if you see any sort of improvement, it's a sign for your brain to like latch on and be like, hey, I can control this thing that makes me feel out of control. Like maybe my weight or my anxiety, right? We just want to feel in control. Ultimately. Yes, yes. That is the emotional trigger that this particular scam has been so successful at exploiting. There's also adaptogens. Have you heard of adaptogens? Oh, yes, I have. And I feel like if Gwyneth Paltrow and Alex Jones are talking about it, that's like red flag. (laughs) Adaptogens are herbs or roots or other plant substances like mushrooms that are purported to help you manage stress or restore a healthy emotional balance or work with a stressful situation better. Again, these are very vague claims. They help me adapt? They help you to adapt. Uh, One of them is ashwagandha. I've heard of this. Many friends. Vox recently reported on the topic and said, quote, many have only been studied on cell lines or in animals. And if there are human studies, they tend to be published in tiny niche journals. A science writer who reviewed some of the studies for self noted that many were not, quote, compliant with international criteria for proper (laughs) clinical reporting, unquote. These are not substances that we can say with any reliability will help you manage a stressful situation. And if you are having enough stress that you feel you need a product to relieve it, you should not be taking a risk like that. You should be talking to a doctor. Therapist. Although that is obviously financially out of the question for a lot of people. For something like hair, skin, and nails, Dr. Peter Cohen an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and an expert on dietary supplements says, quote, I'm not aware of any robust data suggesting that any supplements can treat natural aging related hair loss or nail damage or give you healthier skin, unquote. Dang it. And there are products, there are real products that are like regulated by the FDA that can increase hair growth, that can address things like male pattern baldness over time. And they have been studied and they work, but they're not the products being sold to people. Yeah. And I feel like all of these products as a whole are basically accusing people of like, well, you're not having enough sex. You don't look young enough. You don't look skinny enough. You are not clear skinned enough, right? Here you go. (laughs) You know, and all these phrases are so tempting. And it's just a pill you take. If you could be, you know, even 1% prettier, wouldn't it be easy? And like, wouldn't it be so simple to just take a pill and have that? And it's so funny because if you were to ask somebody, is there a magic pill for anything? Everybody will tell you no. There is no but replacement here for you go. seeing a doctor, for a healthy diet, for regular exercise, for the things that we know work. There is no pill. If there were, if there were a pill for that, the person who invented it wouldn't be an influencer or running a direct, you know, network marketing MLM pyramid scheme scam company. Okay. They would be a genius scientist winning Nobel Prizes. It would be on the front page of the New York Times. Just take this pill and we're all going to live forever. Obviously, that doesn't exist. Obviously, people don't have magical powers. But I am here to tell you, I too have been duped. We have all been duped. We need to realize how silly it is. But it is not something you need to be a silly person to have been tricked by, if you know what I mean. These are complicated topics. We all buy into it because where there's such desperate thinking and all you can think is it, it couldn't hurt, right? But it does actually hurt over time to build up all of these claims and then disprove them because you can, it's really easy to learn something and really hard to unlearn something. Ooh. Most people don't end up seeing the correction in the newspaper. They read the headline. Bingo. And vitamin D is something I know lots of people are still taking with a COVID-related belief. Now, according to Britannica, An essential oil is, quote, a highly volatile substance isolated by a physical process from an odiferous plant of a single botanical species. The oil bears the name of the plant from which it is derived. For example, rose oil or peppermint oil. Such oils were called essential because they were thought to represent the very essence of the odor and flavor, unquote. Essential oils are even less related to health, and there's even less evidence that you need them at all. But... People continue to use it, and they justify it by saying it's aromatherapy, which is another pseudoscience. 
According to NIH.gov, quote, aromatherapy is the use of essential oils from plants, flowers, herbs, or trees as a complementary health approach. The essential oils are most often used by inhaling them or by applying a diluted form to the skin. Many essential oils are used in aromatherapy, including those from Roman chamomile, geranium, lavender, tea tree, lemon, ginger, cedarwood, and bergamot. Aromatherapy is sometimes used for insomnia, but we don't know whether it's helpful because little rigorous research has been done on this topic. Aromatherapy is sometimes incorporated into massage therapy for various conditions, such as knee pain from osteoarthritis or pain, anxiety, and other symptoms in people with cancer. One study of aromatherapy using two contrasting scents, lemon and lavender, in people under stress found that lemon had a positive effect on mood, but that neither scent affected stress indicators, biochemical markers of immune system changes, or pain control, unquote. There is no substantive proof for the use of essential oils as anything, but even as aromatherapy. But the guy at doTERRA told me that they would cure my son's autism. Listen, if you really like candles, you like candles, but let's not make any (laughs) magical claims about what they can do for you. Don't take my lavender candle away. From his Columbia bio, you will learn that Dr. David S. Sears, MD, SCM, PNS, is the Director of Medical Nutrition and a Professor of Medicine in the Institute of Human Nutrition at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. Dr. Sears has been a physician nutrition specialist for 25 years. So when I say he knows what he's talking about, he knows what he's talking about. And he took the time to enlighten us about the real medical science behind any of this. Unless you have an actual deficiency, supplements have no benefit other than to the supplement seller. If you're diagnosed with a deficiency in this day and age, there should be, in addition to supplements prescribed by your physician, a uh, a medical assessment as to how you got there, as well as an analysis of your diet. Most most people eating uh, a relatively healthy diet and, and by relatively, I mean, it doesn't really have to be all that healthy, but people who are eating a relatively healthy diet don't develop deficiencies unless there's something fairly extreme in their diet or a medical condition that, for instance, precludes the absorption of certain nutrients. One example of that is that, that people who get older oftentimes don't make as much acid in their stomach and don't absorb vitamin B12. Most vegetarians probably don't need to worry that much about B12 deficiency because there are still some animal products and it doesn't take much to maintain adequacy. But vegans, on the other hand, are not getting any animal products and there really is no source uh, that's easily available of B12 coming from a non-animal source. Health scams, I guess, have been popular for centuries. And I think where it comes from is a desire to be in control of one's health outcomes So, in, in terms of, you know, I want to live longer. I'd like to be healthier. So let me do things that sound like a good idea that maybe my doctor hasn't told me because, you know, doctors dot, dot, dot. So I think it's really, it sort of boils down to that people are really susceptible to the kinds of things that are promoted because they sound like a good idea or they're they're sold in a way that touches on that desire to be in control of one's health. So the first side effect you'll see is, a, is, is that your wallet will be thinner because you're spending a lot of money. These things are very expensive, and it really makes me nuts that uh, these celebrities are hawking them and have uh, more credibility than, than scientists and, and regulators. But taken in sort of responsible manner, uh, most of the vitamins are, are not going to cause too much of a problem that's more than gastrointestinal upset and things like that. At higher doses, though, I mean, it depends on the vitamin, but there are lots of toxicities. In fact, there is no vitamin that doesn't have toxicities. For instance, if you take too much beta carotene, your skin will turn yellow. That's pretty mild, and it probably doesn't cause too much harm, uh, although it's a pretty ugly-looking yellow color. But uh, there are others that will damage your liver and, and potentially kidneys and things, and those things are kind of hard to pick up on until they're fairly far along. So uh, they might be noticed in blood tests rather than based on symptomatology. This is 
part of the great concern with the dietary supplement industry is that these things can be really insidious and, and not and sneak up on you and that you may not be aware of them until it's too late to do anything about them. taking some vitamins or supplements might be entirely harmless to you. Might. Yeah. But there are potential negative health outcomes that could cost you a lot of money on the back end and not to mention pain and suffering. A 2015 study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that there are an estimated 23,000 emergency visits every year in the U.S. because of adverse events related to the use of dietary supplements. Many of those are cardiovascular issues, Uh, from weight loss, energy products, stacker pills, stuff like you see advertised. uh, You know, every once in a while, they'll get a celebrity to bloat up, then slim down, do a before and after, and and market you, you know, a a variety of different supplements in one small pill that are all, could be interacting with each other. There's truly no one checking. Yeah, I remember that stretch of a couple of years there where it felt like all you would hear about on from the Kardashians was about like their skinny tea that they drank. Yeah, tummy teas, all Ugh. of those things. And especially with something like a tea, it looks like it's ju- it looks like a food product. It yeah. looks like what you're about to consume is just food. But what it actually has is active ingredients that are functioning like a drug and being marketed like a drug, but are not being regulated. Yeah, like a they're drug. not subjected to actual, you know, long-term testing and all the rigmarole that comes with being actually approved. And part of this is you need to speak to your doctor one-on-one about any supplements you're taking, even if you think that, you know, it's silly that you're taking them, you know they don't really work, or whether you're taking them for what might be an embarrassing reason, something you don't normally want to share with anyone, let alone your doctor. But you have to have complete transparency because all of these substances yeah. interact with each other, let alone real pharmaceuticals that have proven effects and side effects that they can interact with. And those can be really negative interactions. High doses of vitamin A can cause birth defects. Supplements containing B6 or B12, iodine, and whey have been linked with acne. Several skin, hair, and nail supplements are associated with an increased risk of cancer and diabetes. Ooh. Patients who don't notify their doctors that they take supplements risk those kind of supplement drug interactions, but they also risk having inaccurate laboratory reports should they need to get their blood taken, oh. should they need to have a, a substance that they produce analyzed by a lab, it's going to be impacted by those things. So if you do decide to go ahead and take these products you don't need, which cost you too much money, <laughs> please be clear with your doctor about what you're doing. Herbal and dietary supplement-induced liver injury now accounts for 20% of cases of hepatoxicity in the U.S. And these are real cases that are really resulting from people trusting what their friend in a pyramid scheme selling vitamins (laughs) tells them. Well, and it's kind of capitalizing on this idea that somehow more is more, right? Like, if that green tea is good for you in its current form— well, let's build a business that then hyper, you know, condenses it so you can have just more of it. And it's like, well, that's not true, right? In life, sometimes more of something is actually a bad thing. More is not always more. You can have way too much of anything, even a good thing. You can have too much water. And unfortunately, under our current economic system, nobody is going to be encouraged to sell you less. Unless they are held accountable, there is no actor in the world who is going to choose to sell you less of anything. If anything, they're going to get you onto payment plans where you're buying it in bulk. Can I tell you like my one essential oil personal story? Because I'm really not in this whole world. So I was actually very excited when you brought up this topic. So we're basically not on speaking terms, essential oils and I, because when I was giving birth... I decided that I was going like, you know, all natural, you know, whatever. So I was taking no drugs and I had a 43 hour labor. Oh my God. And I am trying at this point, I'm in the tub and I am, I don't know, I was probably on hour 30 at this point. I was absolutely delirious. And my doula tells me, hey, put on this bracelet, which is like made of like lava rock or whatever. And I've put some peppermint essential oil in it to kind of like help with who God knows what. 
And so I'm like, whatever. Like, I have no ability to make good decisions for myself at this point. So she puts it on my hand and I'm like putting my head on my wrists, you know, on the tub. And then I start to feel a burning sensation on my face. And I was like, what's happening? My face. And it was this essential oil <laughs> burning my face. And I literally ripped it off and I threw it across the room. I was like, what the fuck? This Torture. Is, this, yeah. So I don't, mm -mm, nah, I'm well, not on the essential oil train. I think you got a pretty comprehensive first impression, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get into it. First, let me introduce you to Rebecca Watson. Rebecca Watson is a journalist, a prominent skeptic, and a YouTube mainstay, and is the founder of the blog Skeptic. Rebecca took some time to enlighten us on the wide, wide world of essential oils and what they claim they can do versus reality. I see a lot of these people, you know, in addition to the essential oils being unregulated, the people selling them are very unregulated. They're just out there on Facebook and Instagram trying desperately to say anything they can to get you to buy the things that they have already tried to buy from this company in order to at least break even. And a lot of them are saying things like, oh, you can just put this essential oil in your smoothie and drink it. And Never do that. Never drink an essential oil. Do not eat essential oils. But I see it all the time. So that's one thing. Don't eat them. But even if you're not eating them, if you're just breathing them in, it can be dangerous, especially if you have pets. Just putting essential oils in your diffuser, you know, what happens with that is that the oils latch on to the steam that you then breathe in. So you are literally breathing oils into your lungs. And for adults, usually not a big deal. But for pets, for cats and dogs, uh, eucalyptus, tea tree, cinnamon, uh, citrus, peppermint, all of these things can be deadly. They can hurt or kill dogs and cats that breathe them in. And, and you know, it's not just animals. Children are much more at risk because children are much smaller. They can't uh, process as much bad stuff as adults can. So uh, there have been several studies showing that lavender and tea tree oils throw off hormones. Not a big deal for adults, but in children, it can lead to breast growth in both boys and girls as young as age eight. And that comes with a possible increased risk of cancer. The worst study that I've seen about essential oils that really shocked me was that However you use essential oils, whether you are inhaling them or rubbing them on your skin, uh, eucalyptus and camphor oils might increase your risk of seizures. There was a study that looked at 350 patients who experienced either their first seizure or a breakthrough seizure, meaning their first seizure after a long time of not having seizures. And they found that something like 16% of them were directly connected to essential oils specifically eucalyptus and camphor. And when the researchers asked those patients to stop using essential oils, they stopped having seizures. And that should be concerning to us. So supplements and alternative medicine have obviously been a growing trend for a long time. Yeah, everywhere. Well, more than half of U.S. adults actually take dietary supplements, and a third of U.S. adults believe in the health benefits of essential oils and aromatherapy. So that's a pretty massive that's chunk of the populace. a large amount of people believing in lavender, which, no shade to lavender, I love it. <laughs> uh, I've definitely experienced a lot of this in my life. When I was growing up, my parents loved a vitamin. They loved like any ad additive that you could purchase listen shout out to flintstones okay we go way back i love those i mean they're basically candy yeah right? i would eat some of those at a movie theater today oh 100 <laughs> <laughs> have like multicolored fluorescent the tea. orange ones only though <laughs> definitely the best so it's been a huge growing trend for decades obviously but it's also a completely unregulated industry 
there is basically no oversight over the claims they make or whether these products work or what they cost or what's included in them. And so at the same time that they've exploded in popularity, it's happened during a time when there's been this huge distrust in the medical community. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are overwhelmed by the amount of information being published by media sources about science or about studies. They do not have literacy in these topics. And so they're drawing outrageous conclusions. And generally, they're seeing doctors less. It's harder and harder for people to afford going to the doctor. And frankly, our health outcomes have really gone down. Like, well, the, the life expectancy in the U.S. has gone down. Yes. And so people are desperate. And they're trying to put their own pieces together because they either can't see doctors or the doctors they do see, they mistrust for valid reasons. I mean, yeah. if someone was tricking me about the price of things, it's hard to trust uh, anything else they have to say. Yeah, it's like, where's... Where do I go when I look at my child and she has like some weird rash? WebMD, right? Well, I'm exactly. like, that's, that's where I go first. You turn to the internet, which has been happening at the same time. This explosion of social yeah. media, explosion yeah. of fake experts, explosion of influencers, an idolization of people for wealth rather than an appreciation and respect for the things that they've learned, like their education in medicine. And media has gotten incredibly visual. And so you have a perfect storm for people to have beliefs that are not based in reality and to be exploited financially. Are you telling the internet is telling me things that aren't true and trying to exploit me? <laughs> are you saying someone would do that? Just go on the internet and lie. <laughs> wow, so cynical. Let's hear one more time from Dr. Sears about how the media has fed into this terrifying cycle of bad information. People talk about a lot of things in diet, and the, the problem is that nobody really helps to filter all these things that people say. And often is not our... Uh, latest excitement about something nutritional is driven by an observational study where an, an association is seen between two things. The problem with this, uh, that kind of study is that one could conclude that it's the pilot's fault for the plane ride getting rough because every time they turn on the seatbelt sign, the plane ride gets rough. But we know better than that. The problem is that biology is complicated. And without doing randomized trials, the, often the case is that we end up finding out that what happens in a correlation is not a cause and effect relationship. I do wish that companies would take responsibility, but it's, it's more of a political question whether or not there's political will. I, I really also need to say that I think in part it's fault of we scientists because of the way we communicate these things as if they were the latest and greatest and uh, based on just an observational study. I've been guilty of this, talking about an observation uh, as something that's exciting, but we don't teach the public that we often don't know whether or not it's really causal. When we lose credibility, then when we actually find something out that's potentially healthy or when somebody tries to sell their latest and greatest snake oil, and we want to try and counter it, if we don't have the credibility to do so, people's health could be harmed. Ugh. Yeah, and I feel like I see this when I just go to the store. Like, I remember as a kid going to the store, and, you know, my mom would go to get the Flintstones, and it's like a small section, you know, like the vitamins and stuff that you would take. And now I go into Walgreens and I feel like two entire aisles are just like CoQ10, um, the skinny tea, this ginseng, that kind of ginseng, 12 types of vitamin B. I mean, it really is, I think, kind of out of control. How much do you think people are spending? 